Thank you, Michael. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service, the day when we think about our mortality. We celebrate that God comes to us in ashes and celebrate all of the ways that God is part of our lives, including being with us in our moments of death and also with us in our moments of coming back to life. A couple of weeks ago at worship, we at church, we began by burning the palms from two Palm Sundays ago. And so please listen to and enjoy our liturgy of the burning of the palms. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We gather here to turn these palms from our celebration of the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, into ashes, that we may be reminded of our mortality and our need for God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, people lined the way and waved their palms and praise of the coming one. Blessed, Blessed is, is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, they cried. cried Hallelujah. Yet by the end of the week, those same people cried out for Jesus' death. Their praise turns to condemnation and taunts of the one lifted high on the cross. Today, we hail Christ as our Lord and King, our Savior, our transformed Lord. Yet with our words and by our actions, we condemn this Lord, denying his power over us each day by the life we live, the one we would proclaim as our Lord on Sunday. We wander away from on Monday and, and deny, deny, betray, curse, and, and abandon, abandon the rest of the week. We fail to see and honor his face in the face of our neighbor. We fail to care for his image imprinted on creation. The psalmist asks God, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, O Lord? From dust we were formed, and to dust we shall return. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We have no life apart from God. Let us pray, living God. In their life, these palms drew life from the earth and gave it back to our air and the animals they hosted and sheltered. In the worship of our community, they helped us offer festive joy. Grant now, O oh God, that these palms, reduced to ashes, may be for us a sign of your power to purify our hearts, that we may recognize death at work in us and replant our lives in the sure and humble soil of your truth and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God desires the death of no one. God tenderly calls us to turn from our sin back to the path of life. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Have the mercy on us, O Lord, and do not let your anger burn against us forever. Let our prayers rise before you as incense. Turn our wayward hearts back to you. Let us pray, gracious God. Out of your great love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to love you and to serve our neighbors. Lead us into true repentance this season of Lent. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face the truth of our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. Go 
Let us hear the word of God. The first reading is from the second chapter of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, Gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make of your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The second reading is from the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love truthful speech and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left in honor and dishonor in ill repute and good repute we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known as dying and see we are alive as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as pure, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Here ends the reading.
Alleluia. Christ has died. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ will come again. Alleluia. Sometimes we must say goodbye for a time. Alleluia. It can help us focus on what needs to be done. Alleluia. We will know the Alleluia is there waiting for us. Alleluia. We will sing it with a new understanding on Easter morning. Goodbye, Alleluia. Goodbye. We will see you again. As Christians, we live in a time of both the now and the not yet. We know that Christ is not really gone, and at the same time, look forward to celebrating the new life and resurrection on Easter. Putting away our most vibrant word of praise gives us a chance to slow down and take time to grow and have a new appreciation for what it means to us to praise with this word on Easter day. And all the people of God say together, Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is Ash Wednesday. Today, we come together to acknowledge our mortality. Today, we come together to hear Corinthians tell us about how to love one another. We see in our gospel reading that Jesus cautions us against using our faith to build up ourselves. One of the best things I ever heard is that real disciples of Jesus, they are always pointing the way to Jesus. People who are practicing their faith, who are in it for themselves are always saying, look at me, I'm the best prayer. Look at me, I'm the most spiritual. Look at me, I know the Bible the best. We are invited today to make sure that we are the disciples who are always pointing people to Jesus. You are not in it to make a name for ourselves. You aren't in it to make a profit. 
but who are in it to invite others into a life-saving relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to be honest, in today's world, that gets very, very complicated. Because here's the thing, if all of the disciples had prayed in secret 100% of the time, the message of Jesus would never have spread and we would not be here 2,000 years later worshiping that same Jesus. There were times that the disciples prayed in public and practiced their faith in public. But the question is, when we do things, do we help people find Jesus in the ways that we do them? Or do we simply help people find ourselves and help them be attracted to us instead of to Jesus? This is a trap that we all fall into, and I think is exactly the one that Jesus was cautioning us to. Jesus invites us also today to know where our treasure is. Our treasure isn't in making a name for ourselves out there. Our treasure is inside of us. And don't get me wrong, when we have that treasure deep inside of us, we absolutely need to be willing to share that with others or the message of Jesus would never go anywhere. On the day that we celebrate our mortality, we are in a really unique position to invite people into a life-saving relationship with Jesus. We can say, hey, I know death. And I know this person named Jesus who knows death. I also know resurrection. I also know new life. The reason that we can celebrate our mortality, the reason that we can celebrate all of the ways that God comes to us is because we know mortality. If there's no mortality, if we were all going to live forever, nothing would matter. We would do whatever we wanted, however we wanted, and it wouldn't matter. We wouldn't need to work on behalf of our neighbors to make sure that they had the basic resources to live their lives. We wouldn't have to work together to protect one another. We are invited at the beginning of Lent into a deeper, more solid relationship with Jesus into a relationship with Jesus that gets us way deep down in our heart when we are in private and then allows us to go out into the world serving our neighbors and saying, hey, I'm serving you because of Jesus. Hey, I can accompany you through this really terrible thing or into this place of death because I know that resurrection is coming and I know that the life of Jesus is possible for you. This is a tricky year to enter into Lent. And so I want to invite you today into a set of spiritual practices that will help ground you in who you are as a disciple of Jesus. Each week during Lent, during our midweek services at 7.30, we'll do hold an evening prayer. And each week we will explore in particular one of our senses and how we can use that sense to notice God. For Lent, I want to invite us into this journey of deeply noticing God, noticing where God is, noticing how God works. Because it is then, when we have done the work in private, that we can be prepared to share that with others. And so sometimes this is really easy. For example, sometimes I'm able to look out my window at the snow and be like, we are going to have the most beautiful flowers because the ground is the most wet. The snow is actually God preparing the ground for flowers because there will be so much moisture soaked into many, many feet of ground, probably. There are, of course, other times I look out the window and I think, oh no, not more snow. But the question is, how can we look at the things around us? How can we touch the things around us? How can we touch the snow? How can we touch the dirt? 
how can we touch one another? How can we smell the communion wine and bread? How can we feel the ashes on our forehead tonight and know that we have a God who is absolutely present in this world, who is absolutely present, not just in the hereafter, not just on a day we're talking about our mortality, not just after we die. We get to know God here and now. We get to see God in the faces on Zoom. We get to see God in each other. We get to notice how God works through the internet, which is something that many of us have not practiced noticing God before. There are all kinds of ways to notice where God is and how God is working in the world. There are people who are crying out for justice. There are people who don't have their basic human needs met. And one of the ways that we can notice where God is, is we can notice the people who are working to make sure that everybody has their basic human needs met. We can notice the healthcare workers. We can notice also very, very simple things. In the world that we're living in, it can be sometimes hard to remember that sometimes our pets are symbols of God's unconditional love and care or laughter in our lives. I know many people who have gotten new pets during the pandemic, and that has brought a lot of laughter. We are invited to notice God. And so here's the thing that we often do during Lent, which is the concept of giving something up. So Jesus talks about giving up, showing off your faith in a way that points to you instead of Jesus. We are invited to look at our mortality and know that what we say and do here on earth matters because this is the only life that we get. You are invited to give up ignoring God. We all do it. We all get busy. We all, you know, some of us on this call even are working from home and repeating third grade again because it's virtual school. Some of us are busy doing all kinds of other things and we forget to look out the window once a day and be like, dear God, thank you for preparing the ground for the flowers. We forget to hold dirt in our hands or to hold the ashes and know that God is saying your body, your earthly body will eventually turn to ash. But that's great because that means that it matters. It matters now. The words we speak to our neighbors and our loved ones matter. The way that we treat one another matters. You are invited to notice God in a much more deep way than normal. And let's be honest, that's not necessarily sustainable, but it is sustainable for the six weeks of Lent. You are invited into this very deep practice of noticing God in all of the places and all of the ways so that you are absolutely able to be the kind of disciple that is always pointing others directly to the Jesus, the Jesus who comes and offers us life out of death, who offers us resurrection out of the tomb and promises to always be with us and walk with us as we learn to notice where God is and care for our neighbors this Lent. Thanks be to God, amen. Restore in us, O oh God, the 
invited to Lent. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus's Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resist whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you therefore to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacraments. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus's death and resurrection. Let us Confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Let us have a moment of silence to think about the ways that we are personally separated from ourselves, one another, God, and creation. Most holy and merciful God. We confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O oh God. God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O oh God. God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. 
our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. This confession continues through Monday, Thursday, so there is no absolution until then. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. If you are at home, you may use this time to mark yourself or those in your household with your ashes. Remember that you are dust. To dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. 
by the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us, us with all your saints, saints to the to joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Oh God, you called your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Oh God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our prayer list. And support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Oh God, you are love and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying toward baptism and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. you. You may unmute yourselves and share the peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is our moment of generosity. And so we will uh, sing and uh, Megan will drop an online giving link in the chat. One of the ways that we support our ministry and our ability to uh, share the gospel through the Lutheran Church of Martha and Mary is through gifts of your time and talent and treasure. So you are invited to reflect on all of the different ways that we can be generous through LCMM during this time. Thank you. 
Holy Provider, we thank you for the ways in which you have provided for us. Help us know the difference between the things given to us by you, the result of our work, the gifts of community, and that which comes to us as a result of privilege. By your grace, bring us to a spirit of generosity with our talents, possessions, and energy, that we might bear witness to your abundance. Amen. Amen. Welcome to communion. This is a time when you can prepare for communion. And so if you have bread and wine at home, get those. If you have the cups from church, you can open, don't eat and drink now, but you can open the clear layer on the top, which will reveal your wafer. And then after you have taken off the clear layer on the top to reveal the wafer, then you can peel off the purple metallic layer to reveal the grape juice. So open your wafer and juice and set them aside. Please join in our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. We lift up our praise to you, holy God of justice, who will promise to restore the beautiful kingdom in which power is returned to those from whom it has been stolen. God, who sent your son, Jesus Christ, to call for repentance of sins and proclaim freedom to the oppressed. In these 40 days, lead us into the desert of accountability. As Christ rejected the deceiver while in the desert, call us to reject the demon of separating people into hierarchies, cleansing the spirits of individualism and defensiveness, perfectionism and fear. Help us grow in wisdom and compassion that we may be the body of Christ made whole once again. When we hide in our own comfort, challenge us. When we hoard power, humble us. When we see only one way, open before us new paths leading toward peace rooted in equity. As we prepare for the Easter feast, let us be joyful that you have prepared a seat for your whole human family at the table, calling us to join with angels and saints of every race and culture, praising you and saying, God, our creator, you gave your only child to model for us the giving up of all earthly power, radical love of neighbor, and sharing of all possessions, even giving up life and breath in the name of love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread, strengthen us for the Lenten journey of self-reflection, repentance, and atonement. With this wine, 
Fill us with the fire to follow your call, to deny ourselves and pick up our cross. Knowing Jesus came to proclaim good news to the poor and to free the oppressed, surrendering life for salvation. We remember Jesus's sacrificial passion. We proclaim his resurrection and the defeat of death. And we live into the hope that he will return to restore our divided and unbalanced world. Send now, we pray, the breath of Sophia to permeate these gifts of bread and wine, that we may take into ourselves the Holy Spirit, who speaks sacred truth and conviction into our hearts, through, with, and in Jesus, unified with the Holy Spirit. Our gratitude and praise are yours, O oh God, now and forever. Amen. Um, Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, taste and know forgiveness. Thanks be to God. You are invited to eat your wafer or bread as you hear these words. The body of Christ given for you. You are invited to drink and hear these words. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. You may now share with those around you if you wish while we sing. a blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy one in three, through your death we are fed with the bread of life. Let us follow your way to the cross to be for others a sign of your compassion and life. As you have fed us, 
let us go out to be part of feeding the world. Amen. Let us sing. May God lead you to openness that grants understanding. May God guide you to accountability that begins restoration. May God inspire you to transforming love that celebrates all people and all creation. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks.